Parental discretion is advised. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, are you enjoying the Wrestling Mayhem Show? Are you finding value in these conversations? Do you want to support it so we can become even bigger? Check out patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. Hey guys, it's the show where we talk about men in tight tights and I really need to stop using that introduction. It's a wrestling mayhem show, Sorgatron at Sorgatron on the Twitters, coming at you from Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA, and my favorite time of the week. Don't tell the other podcasters. Uh, where well, we've our hey, eight year wait, long. Whoa. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Um, with the wrestling mayhem show, with me uh, uh, back again from his uh, his uh, exile is Papa Lunchbox. Where would he at? I'm here. Oh, there it is. You got me? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Your, your shot didn't update. What's, it was weird. That is weird. What's up, everybody? I am uh, Bob Lunchbox, back on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. It's good to be back, and I am here to remind you that the movie The Sandlot is oh. garbage. Oh, you, you leave that. If you want to know DJ, if you want to know more about that, yeah, you can check out the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Go hey, through Patreon. Sork, sork. Yeah. Sork, guess what? Uh, what? What, LB? Fuck The Sandlot all day long. You know, I'm not... I I am more hurt garbage. by the by the Goonies than the Sandlot. No, I, it's not that I don't. I said I don't. It's not that I don't like the Goonies. I've just never seen it. Yeah, we need to make that different. Okay. I was watching Grown Up Goonies. Right. I was watching Indiana Jones. Grown Up Goonies. That yeah, is kind of Grown Up Goonies, I guess. Grown Anyways, Goonies. also with us is the Riz. That sounded dirty. What? Um. <laughs> hi, Gary. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. I don't have a comeback for that one, but The Sandlot is the best movie in the world. Oh wow! Okay. Shut so is mouth. it? Is it? It is. It must be. It must be very good, except for the parts that they released on film. Guys, uh, while those guys uh, argue here in Pittsburgh, uh, we got our friend from Poughkeepsie, New York, and Mad Mike. Mad Mike will break this tie because he has a movie podcast. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, and my opinions we- mean more because I'm closer to the entertainment capital of the world. So, Wait, what? Lot, thumbs up. Wait, what? I hate to break it to you, but You're we further... are actually closer yeah, to Los I think, Angeles I think... than you are. Yeah. Uh, I'm talking New York City. Yeah. Uh, no, that's not right. That's not right. Yeah. That's There's yeah. nothing entertaining about hot garbage and gun violence. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. wow. That was almost harsher than the John Oliver Port Authority piece. Uh, that's, <laughs> almost. that's worse than you calling Sandlot sucky. Let's move on. We're supposed to talk about wrestling because this is the Wrestling Mayhem <laughs> Show, which you can find us at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker, audio and video formats. Please like, thumbs up star comment share everything amongst all your friends all your friends i don't even care if they like wrestling we have some fans that don't even like yell, wrestling that yell at lunchbox because he said the sand lots exactly just so, agree hey, with hey look at this fool wise look correct. at this fool who doesn't like the sand lot let's go laugh at him on this podcast and and help their <laughs> download numbers and everything you can also drop a line and and tell you tell i'll be how much good time good, good times good times the wrestling mayhem show dot com is the email address you're right you're you're right though less than enthusiastic you're right uh you can good also time. drop us a line at 412-206-wms0 is the hotline and you can give us all your thoughts all day long for that um Jeez. And I'm sorry, you can join us here live in the chat room at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Yeah, that's chat they room's hopping right now. Where they're hopping. They got some uh, they're, they're they got hopping. some animated gifts going on. They got some yeah. crazy stuff. We'll touch yeah, on that a little I, later, I, maybe. I, I miss the good times because of the gift that Garza put in the chat oh. room. It's mildly disturbing. 
Uh, mildly is. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you can join us here at live.sorgatronmedia.com around about 9 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, or you'll catch the end of the video game show. That'll happen, too. Or you can stick around at 11 p.m. And uh, we talk Indie Mayhem show uh, with our guests every week. This week, we got the great referee uh, from the area, Jake Clemens, to get his uh, view on everything. So stick around for that or download that uh, later on the iTunes thingies. Um, so with that, uh, uh, also want to give a shout out to our Patreoners. Heard about it at the top of the show, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. A couple of supporters, including rest, the wrestling revolution.com. Go check them out. Go long time friends of the show. And of course, Bo diggity. Woo! Woo! Hell yeah. And let's start the show off with the only way we know how with the fan mail. Um, Dibs. Dibs? Okay, sir. <laughs> uh, which one? I'll do the first one. Uh, hello, friends. You can't just call free floating no. dibs. No, I'm calling dibs. Hello, you friends. call dibs on a specific one. Hello, friends. <laughs> what is everyone's favorite Buddy Landell match? What? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you can go watch Buddy Landell matches on the WWE Network, which is a nine ninety nine, uh, but I've not. But that time he beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania thirty. <laughs> yep. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yep. Anybody else? Nope. I prefer his stuff with Jerry Lawler in Memphis. Ooh. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not just being a dick. I happen to have. To see some of it when I was working at WWE, so <laughs> I just found out Buddy Landell is a wrestler. Wait, <laughs> well, this is me. Well, Lunchbox. What? No, I agree. I agree with you guys. Are you, are you okay over there? I'm great. <laughs> All right, we got another one here. A lot of short emails this week. Drugs. Hey, Mayhem Crew, nine ninety nine zero out. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Guys, how is it that the, this, this WWE Network has become a joke on WWE? <laughs> well, they did the same thing with the app. Did they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like when Cole was saying. Like when he was doing all the app ads every week, week mm-hmm. in, week out, and then they just started becoming a joke. Like, oh, how many times is Cole gonna mention the app this week? Like, you know, doesn't that suck though? Because like, I would listen to the uh, Jim Ross. I, I highly, highly recommend the Jim Ross interview um, on Cole Cabana's uh, uh, Art of Wrestling podcast, and he talks about that and he talks about you know the plugging stuff, like in the middle of the match and and in the middle of telling story and 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 you know the ads in the wrong places and everything. So it's not like Michael Cole picks when to talk about the app. Yeah, if you um, right, if you watch that SmackDown that included like it came out a few months ago. Do you remember this? It was a SmackDown where they didn't um, they didn't put in the commercial breaks and you could hear everybody's mic and everything. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, the out. retapes. He mentions something in his microphone where he's like, "Are you sure about this? Because I have mentioned that shit a lot." And then apparently he gets chewed out and told to mention it a whole bunch more. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean? Go ahead, Mike. Well, I mean, they, they always have to push product like that. Like uh, sometimes when we were, uh, when I was working at WWE, they ha- they would have the live feed before the show started. Like for Sunday Night Heats before pay-per-views, it would just be a straight live feed. Mm-hmm. And they would just talk about how many times they have to, reference stuff and this is like back in 97 before they even have yeah a website let alone an app well we like, we and we've often talked about how much stuff is you know driven into our heads all week in the in the certain points and everything and then plug in the pay-per-view and let's talk about mountain dew and the app and the 999 WWE network app you know and and and, and 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 i also wonder because of everything going on lately with the WWE network and getting the bad press you know, is it is this a reaction to that, to them saying all that? Or did somebody listen to Jim Ross's podcast and they're responding to it? You know, no, um, I, I think it's just they're trying to get it back in the news because it's going to be going out globally soon. Yeah, that's the big news mm-hmm. actually coming up is is that global thing. Um, so I but still, I, I, I it's I hate I absolutely hate 
the idea that they're in trouble because of the stock market. You know, it's not like I don't think they're on a tra- trajectory they didn't expect going into this. Oh, uh, I think I think they probably were hoping they would have had a few more bo- like a few yeah. more but thousand still, buys like, before they went worldwide. But... I still remember the early presentation was we want X number by the end of the year. Not mm-hmm. in three months, not in six months, by the end of the year. And yeah, they but seem I don't, on track for I that. I think they're talking about within the U.S. Yes. I don't I don't think they're going to make that. Well, I, I, you know, that was not, I didn't expect them to do international this soon. Do you think they're fast they're, tracking it? Well, you know why? Hmm. Because the the early the early adopters who bought day one, they only have like two weeks left to, before they decide to renew or not. Okay. Well, that's not why. I think, I think that's why. That's not why they're international because it takes a lot more than that. Well, no, but, but I think that's, that's why, why they're, they're pushing it. Yeah, it's another mm-hmm. reason for the hard sell. That's true too. And, they, and you can you can hate the idea that they're in trouble because of the stock market, but I mean it's a business, man. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know they they answer to their their stockholders and their shareholders more way more than they answer to us. Mm-hmm. They don't answer to us at all. No, no, it, yeah, it, it definitely just, is that we're just some assholes who watch their TV show. <laughs> yeah, in the eighties, in the eighties, it was the gates at the live events. In the nineties, it was the TV ratings, mm-hmm. and in the aughts, it's the stock prices. Right. Mm-hmm. right. That, that's they they never answered to us. They've never answered to us. It's no, they answered been to us some... when we were kids. Mm-hmm. No. No, I no, because it's still a business. Well, they're still and they're still answering to us buying the T-shirts and the tickets and and everything like that. No, I think. no, they're no? they're answering to the kids. It's the kids now. Yeah, well, it's, it's always our, it's, it's always been the kids. It's, it's always been the kids because it was us. Okay, and now we're old enough to have kids and mm-hmm. we control the money. So now they're they're you know now it's our kids. That's true. That's true. And you gotta get them young, right? That's why there's always a teddy well, bear of Shawn Michaels. Uh huh. That's why John Cena is kids. on top. Mm-hmm. If they're after the kids, they should release more episodes of Slam City. Damn it! Yes, for us. Seamus and Brock Lesnar are still stuck in that movie. <laughs> I want to know how they get out. For the first time, I finally saw the commercial that incorporated those animations just for a commercial for the toys. Yep. So I, I'm. It's weird that now is the first time I've seen it. Of course, I don't watch a lot of children's programming. I'm sure it's plastered all <laughs> over all of that stuff. So. Sorg, that is bullshit, and both of us know it. No, you okay, okay. I don't watch children's programming on television with commercials. I okay. am. I yes, say, I'm almost. Given yes, Saturday I morning. did jump back into the Iron Man Armored Adventures, even though that's more of a kid themed one. Yes, I am <laughs> working my way through the Green Lantern animate uh, CG animated one. Uh, yes. Show. What? That's a damn good show. It is a damn good show. It, it, it is a, actually really Thor, good. Thor, that finale's gonna, that finale's gonna make you cry. Oh no. I'm not joking. I'm because not joking of, at all. Avengers Assemble but, made me cry for other reasons. Yeah, no, but Green Lantern's gonna make you cry like man tears. Dude, I dude, I tears. was like about to cry at the end of the Transformers Prime series. Damn, man. Damn, man. <laughs> or, yeah, Earth, 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 wrestling. Earth, definitely. Um, anyways, back wrestling. to it. Back to it, man. Um, wrestling. Wrestling. <laughs> WWE Network. Um, we, you, hey, nine, we, nine, nine, nine. we are six <laughs> months in, and is anybody thinking about letting it go here? No. No, of no, course not. No. No, the people who are going to let it go are the people who think it's their their it's their duty to back off. No, honestly, and it, what? <laughs> it's what? their duty. They're like you're talking about the smart marks, right? You're talking about the internet wrestling yeah. community marks, right? It's their duty. It's their duty to co- the poop uh, on this. But, it's their duty to do a duty on this. Here's here's why. Okay, I want a reason. They also have ne- they have this pay-per-view to to see if they like it mm-hmm. and then once they see I, I don't know if it's the does it go into next week and the week after SummerSlam? i want to it, say it's like the 24th so after so yeah. after 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 the first pit, raw after and SummerSlam. it also depends on it depends when you bought it did you buy show. it right off yeah, yeah. It depends on what they show for that next pay per view. Mm-hmm. That but next pay per view is going to be 
big for the WWE. Night of Champions. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, honestly, even like, unless you're an idiot, if you're going to watch, no, if you're hey. going to watch all the, no, but if you're going to watch all the pay-per-views and you don't even watch anything else on the network, <laughs> you're paying $10 for a pay-per-view mm-hmm. You know, even, every month. Even like, I don't, I've honestly, I've watched one pay-per-view on it since I bought it. But that's only because of the graciousness of our friends, uh, the Carlins. Um, but you've watched it on the network, that, just not on your. That is account. true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Um, that that is true. Uh, but I also I watch NXT every week, if nothing else. I watch it every week. Main event. I can pop it on. Like I'm not watching a ton of it, to be honest. And that's partially my schedule. It's partially other things going on. Um, but you know, I, I I don't know how how have your habits been. I watch it at night generally. Like I'll pop in, I'll pop in a random uh, WWE or WCW pay per view. I actually just watched the um, um, the Great American Bash. I think that had the Punjabi Prison match. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> and oh, and on that same pay per view, they had a pudding match between Kali at its finest, right? And. Melina and Candice Michelle had a pudding match, and Ooh. I forgot I forgot some of the stuff that WWE used to pull on pay-per-views, because, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah, it, 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 that's fun. I, I know I you know I pop on, like, you know, Raws in the morning when I'm working at the desk, you know? Um, I'll be honest. I would probably watch it more if it had Chromecast uh, support on it. Uh, just because I can pop it over my TV without putting the Xbox on. I have on. a feeling it's that's a, coming. It, you know it's coming. It has to be coming. You know, uh, if, if they got if Xbox One took this long to do, yeah, yeah, they're the like Chromecast is next. Yeah. You know, the funny part is Chromecast is not hard to implement. It's like a few lines of code, and they got it. So, oh, so you said like, code. No code, code. They just got somebody that says we're going to do. They just need somebody to say we need we need to do a Chromecast one. We already and, and kick it over their app, people, and they're good to go. Um, even implement- wheels, even wheels agrees in the chat room. They need to put it on Chromecast. Exactly, exactly. Then I'll never. I wonder if they turn- have a deal. With, I wonder if they have a deal with Roku though. I don't. Considering they're on the they Fire TV, on TV, they're on they're the on Fire Apple TV, TV, the Apple TV. They're, there's they're no, there's no, they are not exclusive to okay. anything. And no, nobody's, nobody's worried about the Chromecast. Well, I don't think. No, and, the only, re- the only reason I thought that might be the case is because they're selling Roku boxes on WWE Shop. Well, there's that deal, but oh, yeah, that's, there's that's the easiest thing for them. Say here, and it's cheaper. You know, uh, the wrestling fans are like not going. Go ahead. They're not going to shell out a. A brand new PlayStation Four or Xbox no. One with the WWE Network on it. That's just stupid, and nobody's going to buy that. But they're going to buy a Roku box because it is that small and that portable and that easy to use. I do love that idea that if you're like, I've never done this internet TV thing, um, and I want to get my wrestling. Uh, here's <laughs> like your all together package, right? Thingy thing. But I, it, it's super smart on their sides. Uh, I'm trying to find it here. It's still on their site, right? For WWE Network? For what? The the Rokus? Yeah, the Rokus uh, yeah. are being sold. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Rokus are being sold on shop. Yeah, I'm trying to find them here. Uh, but no, because that, that, it is. It, well, 50 bucks is your, your starting point. The only thing better, and I bet this happens when they get support, I bet you they start selling Chromecasts. Probably. I could see that. Or maybe not because then you have to have a smartphone and not everybody's going to have a smartphone. I guess. It's it's probably easier to, to just send the box. Smart no, no, because no, I mean, yeah. if you have a, I mean, it's not just smartphones. You know, you can do it from your laptop and everything. If they have support for that. Like uh, Hulu, uh, you, you have app support, but I don't think I can Chromecast from the browser for it. Oh, but, I see. But I can with, like YouTube's the only one I know that I can. You know, I, that I can do a native thing. We're getting real technical. This is kind of awesome cast territory, but it's what you need to know for the network, which is wrestling. So it all comes back which together, is, which is nine ninety nine, which is nine ninety nine. So yeah. wait, sort. 
Yes. I need to know more than just the Bella twin sitting me down dressed as airline attendants and telling me I to make sure my device is on. Wow, I that was fun. I've fairly recently seen a porn like that. <laughs> it's not. Was it uh, also nine ninety nine? Nope, that one was free because I live on the internet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, um, <sighs> but either way, uh, you, you know, what's interesting in this international announcement, again, more of an awesome cast kind of um, uh, uh, territory here. But I thought it was interesting that for Canada, so I don't think it's going to, they're going to have the network per se available in Canada right away. But they are going to have the live stream on Rogers Cable as a subscribable channel. That's really cool. Is it? I like it. Yeah. Okay. I like the concept. It's like accessible. Concept. Sure, it's accessible. It's a, it makes it more accessible. It does. Frankly, it's a foothold. It yeah. And, and it's it's and maybe you're going to see these different formats. Maybe maybe we'll see a version of the network here in the future like on Comcast or something. Uh, or, or you know whatever or carriers like dish. or dish yeah I, I can see it on dish for I sure can see dish. I, I was gonna say yeah because I think they're I think they might be doing this in Canada as like a trial yeah just to see if they want to try and work something out what dish. if they or have a plan like and, and now I'm them. I'm forever gonna be the completely detached 999 whatever user but what if they do have a plan with cable where they start selling subscriptions through the cable system as well uh, that you or build through there. You get the live stream on your TV. Don't have to worry about the internet thing. It, maybe it's like an HBO Go that it also includes everything else on demand. And they are yeah. they, they are supposed to be including on demand content as well, just not as extensive, obviously, as as what you will actually get on the internet. So, yay Canadians! You know, you, you got something. And I know internet is a problem up there for a lot of them. Um, I, I think they have a lot of. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that they have a lot of like like data cap issues up there. I think. What? So, what? What? Canada. <laughs> America. Ah, uh, you stunk. That's, that's what happens when you have a monopoly in your uh, cable and communication systems. Uh, imagine Can- uh, Comcast successfully did buy everybody here. Canada. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, we, oh, scary. we all shuddered, didn't we? If, if it's on Comcast. One. Ugh. It's Comcastic, man. I uh, haven't even I have never even had Comcast, and I know that's bad. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I had Comcast for a while. They uh they weren't the service kind of sucked, but to be fair, I treated them like shit too. So <laughs> it was professional mutually, wrestling. It was, it was a mutual <laughs> relationship. I was I was professional very, wrestling. I was very abusive to my Comcast, uh, Comcast people. <laughs> Speaking of being abusive, Triple H um. Tried tried to start a porno last night with Brie Bella, didn't he? Yeah, that got weird real fast. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, it it looked kind of awkward, By especially we- the look of joy on his face. By weird, do you mean naughty? Well, yes, obviously. I mean, he pushed a table up against the the turnbuckle and had Brie Bella pinned down, and not in the wrestling kind of way. Like yeah. that. that- that, that well, shit, considering good. considering how much uh, lawsuits are going on WWE, fucking why don't she just sue him for workers' comp? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, but, but we're not, that's not the only porn that was on WWE last night. <laughs> Did we forget the weird orgy that just happened in front of our eyes? Yep. Yeah. Oh. The 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 Summer Ray, Layla, Diego. Horny and horny. Uh, horny. I was going to say, you're going to have to narrow it down. Uh. Yeah. Horny and El Torito, all five of them just. Well, well no, Riz, insane. it's horny and horny because El Torito has horns and the other one's Hornswoggle. So. Yeah. That might be even worse than the one with Brie Bella, just pointing out there. Raw was kind of a weird show last night. <laughs> yeah. Not like a bad Order. weird, though. Like. It was like, just weird. It was an yeah. interesting show from top to bottom, wasn't it? Like they even had the Oculus Rift thing, which we forgot to talk about in the hangout last night. <laughs> that was that was very strange. I was kind of I missed the Oculus Rift thing. Oh no, you didn't. But but um, uh, Adam Rose was backstage with the Rosebuds, and apparently for some reason they had the Oculus Rift mirror back there, 
And it's supposed to look, and you're supposed to see, like, the opposite version of yourself or the true version of yourself or something. And he looked in the, the mirror, version. and um, he was in a business suit. I, with... just, I just wanted one of Will's uh, lemon heads to pop up in the mirror of him. Uh, I, just wanted him to... <laughs> I wanted him to look in the mirror and see Leo Kruger. <laughs> I wanted him to look in the mirror and see Karen Gillan. But... Well, I mean, who didn't want to see Karen Gillan? <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Was there a mention Wait, last night so of there... Guardians of the Galaxy at all? Like, no. That Batista is in the top grossing August movie ever? No, but there probably should have been. Yeah, that seems weird. I understand them not, like, it's they're not paying for it, but still, it's like, hey, Batista, your guy was in, like, they're, they're always big on pushing that kind of thing, right? I can't. Re- I think I can't remember where I saw this. I think it was in a, a commercial that I read last night, and it said WWE superstar Batista in Guardians of the Galaxy or something along those lines. Hmm. Like it might be maybe because he's not the lead, but still, he is significant enough for that to be worthwhile. By the way, Oculus Rift or Oculus whatever? No, that's something else. Oculus is the weirdest freaking movie for them to be advertising on WWE. I feel. Mm-hmm. You no, know, it's one of theirs. I know it's one. It. No, I know it's one of theirs, which makes it weirder to me. Um, I really, it, we're gonna say it's weirder than See No Evil. Well, it had Kane in it at least. Yeah, but yeah. Kane was a masturbating, hook-throwing demon. We didn't know that until the movie, though. That, right, that's, <laughs> that's, that's that's fair. We well, we didn't. We knew about the hook thing and the demon thing, but the other part we didn't know. <laughs> Wow. Uh, but yeah, that, that uh, movie. There's always, there's always uh, Sino Evil 2. Maybe his big giant dick will make an appearance there. <laughs> I'm excited will. for Sino Evil 2. I don't care. I like Sino Evil 1, and I'm excited for Sino Evil 2. All right. Good. On that note, I want to How can it. you say stuff like that and then expect me to go along with you liking The Sandlot? <laughs> I also like very bad movies sometimes. All right. Well, like yeah, the Sandlot? Yeah. Leave that for the gold. Leave that for the gold, guys, while we give a shout out to our friends at Slice on Broadway. Um, uh, very fortunate week for them. They just opened their second location in Carnegie, PA. And of course, they're right up the road here, providing us with pizza, feeding the in studio guests that have been visiting us week to week, uh, and, uh, and and just being all around good people. And so, if you're uh, you know heading out, if you're you're you're, you're Pittsburgh bound, if you're going to or from the airport, make sure the taxi stops off in Carnegie, right down there on Main Street, uh, for their new location. Taxi. taxi, isn't that what the people do? Those fancy Nobody people takes taxis. It's for the fancy people. That listen to this podcast from out of town. Ubers, Sorg. Ubers. Are we allowed Ubers to Uber again? Lifts. I thought we're not allowed to Uber. Is it? Oh, we're allowed to that? Uber. We, oh, we we fixed the Uber. Oh, oh, we're allowed to Uber, even if we're not. Do it anyway. Do it anyways. The mayor said so, right? Mayor said so, he and did. so did Papa Lunchbox. And Papa Lunchbox, use your Uber. So go check them out. Slice on Broadway down in Carnegie, PA, and check out. About both locations, sliceonbroadway.com. A New Yorker likes it, right, Mike? Yes. Although I pronounce it Carnegie, but that's different. That well, that's the New York way to do it. I still have not, and I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> you should. It's delicious. Yes, you should. It's should very have an good pizza. You definitely need to have an outing. We'll have to set up a pizza pals where it's just for you to visit us. Yay! Yay! I mean, you still haven't invited me to the studio since the since the Christmas episode, so wait, I'm not going to. Do I have to invite you? To, whoa, there. whoa, whoa! Do I really have to invite you to the studio? Chad just said I'm showing up. <laughs> it's true. Well, I mean, if you're well, on the true. show, like Sork, he's a Hall of Famer. That that's true too. That's true too. You, you like the standing art. I shouldn't say this on the show, but the standing thing is if you're a person that's regularly on the show, you can show up in the studio whenever you want. You feel like coming out here, Riz. You can do that. You can partake in I the can, pizza. There's still a couple of slices so. left. Come on, get in your car, man. Riz, get in your car. Riz, it's get in your late. car. Sorry. Riz, car. It's you way can stick around. Late, Come on, sorry. Indie Mayhem show. It's never too late for I, love and pizza. Get in the car. Riz, we'll put our we'll put our heads together and we'll both go into the studio and have like a Christmas in August. There you go. Oh God. There you go. I'll bring you a bottle of wine and feed you. Uh, you can uh, eat the same uh, piece of pizza and meet in the center. Yeah. Oh. And then I can <laughs> suck the balls right off your body. 
Nine, nine, nine. Say hi, to, <laughs> say hi to our friends at Slice on Broadway, and don't mention this part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have the weirdest pizza advertisements ever. I, I don't think they listen to this. Uh, Lilana Kai. I don't know. It's the next thing I found. I hope they. I hope they do listen to this after that one. Lani Kai. Lani Kai is coming to Marietta, Ohio. I don't know why I'm saying that. I just I'm trying to change the subject really hard right now. <laughs> really <laughs> hard. Really hard. Lani Kai. Yeah. She used to be hot, right? No, you're thinking of uh, Kimono, Kimono oh, Wanalea yeah. from ECW, which is who I was thinking of, and then I saw that picture. Yeah, yeah Lani Kai was in the first WrestleMania and in the tenth WrestleMania. Oh. And I believe she lost both times. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> um, all right. Here's, we can get I got something, Sword. Okay, go for it. How about this? Uh, I know that, uh, you know, we, we don't talk about this uh, this individual much here on the show, but uh, CM Punk recently made an appearance. Who? Philip K. Brooks. K? Uh, he oh, should... he's the guy who. Sword, Sword. Oh. He's the guy. He's the guy who was on that show talking about The Walking Dead. Oh, That's who that guy was. That very right. sad show where everybody wanted to cry. Yeah. Yes. That was weird. Look at the flowers. Anyway, uh, <laughs> flowers. he... he uh, I want to cry now. He made... You should, because walking, you should watch The Walking Dead. Um, hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was on uh, the Nerdist podcast recently, and he. I uh, actually just listened to it last couple, night. Couple I listened hours to it this it was, morning. It's quite good. It was mm-hmm. quite good. Uh, yeah, uh, he never makes me want to run a marathon, though. That's true, because you'll shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> he tells he tells a story that he calls the with the eight was it the eighth the mile eighteenth eighteenth mile eighteenth mile yeah 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 um about shitting himself and having to wipe himself on with something uh non-traditional uh but anyway it's very funny and uh, uh everyone should go listen to it at nerdist.com yes, yes. It, it, there's not much about wrestling in the podcast admittedly no. they talk about old wrestling for like a minute um uh, mm-hmm. but still if you just are a fan of cm punk oh, it's worth a listen but there yeah. was a nugget of information in there that i find actively very exciting hmm. Apparently, they are working on a trailer for um, a Randy Savage documentary, mm-hmm. like a mockumentary starring Joe Magniello as Randy Savage. Oh, OK. So they, they talked about a project. I didn't catch what the project was. With, with... Oh, yeah. yeah. It, when uh, when they had Joe Manganiello on uh, the Nerdist, it just devolved into like a whole big wrestling discussion, which was awesome because you can tell he was a huge fan of it. And he did a dead-on Macho Man Randy Savage impression. And apparently they're doing something for the Nerdist, like a trailer for a mockumentary called Savage. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so amped about it. I'm so amped. I can't wait. And they mentioned that that they might want CM Punk to be in it. And he's also apparently on the uh, episode 28 of the Wrestling Compadre Slamcast, which I think is one Bobby was telling me about. Uh, confirm in the chat room, Bobby. Uh, so... Worth worth checking out. I, the nerd, nerdist generally, if you if you like geeky stuff, you like comedy. It's it, they got a lot of good stuff going on over there. Oh, um, yeah. definitely one of the one of the top uh, podcast networks. We can only aspire mm-hmm. to be. Yeah. But, the nice thing about it, it was it was live at Comic Con. One of the nice things about it was that uh, the fans were very respectful. Oh yeah. You know, nobody nobody was like, "Why'd you fucking leave, bro?" You know, they were all yeah. like, anybody who did mention his wrestling career said something like, "You know, I think it's I think you're." You know, great. I appreciate what you did for the business. Yeah, you know, yeah. they were all fans and they're all very uh, nice. So I feel like that crowd, and I don't know how it was announced because I think it's one thing you had to get tickets for in order to go go check that out. It wasn't a uh, Hall H kind of, you know, you know. Well, uh, the Nerdist shows are not part of Comic Con, right? Per right. Smart, uh, uh, yeah. Smart yeah, cast has been the same way, where you have to get tickets for it, right? So I, yes. I think the crowd was there for the rest of them. They were there for Nerdist. They were not there for CM Punk. It sounds like he might have gotten announced a little bit later from the way they were talking, perhaps. So, well, uh, it was the second show that they announced after the first one sold out. Okay. And and Punk was doing um, stuff for the Nerdist Network, so I think they were just like. Hey, you want to come on and be the guest? 
Yeah. Yeah, and that idea that like him and Chris Hardwick are, are are good buddies now, it kind of stretches my brain a little bit, you know. Um, but hey, cool! It, it's 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 the perfect thing since he is a big freaking nerd like us that's just in mm-hmm. better shape, uh, and mm-hmm. and decides to run a marathon like the last minute. Uh, and also super day. rich. And also super rich. Also super oh, and also and like, also is banging AJ Lee. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, like, or there's is a it, point. It, there's a point where where he he talks about how he almost bought Action Comics number one that was going for only like I think one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It's usually a million dollar one. It was a a restructured uh, uh, copy of it, and he talked about calling his wife about it. And it's like that's <laughs> AJ. That's AJ. You know, mm-hmm. just like like we can r- wrap our heads around that part. You know, and and that that's that's kind of interesting. So. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed that AJ didn't let him do it. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I would have thought, you know, that's not bad for what he pulls in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's Action Comics number one for Christ's sake. <laughs> wow. On that note, guys, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've talked one thing about wrestling today. No, we and have. This is all wrestling. It's, it's all, all wrestling. Counts. Related. It's all counts. Nine ninety nine. We haven't had a show where we're like, "What did we talk about <laughs> wrestling for a while?" As well. Uh, what did but, Damian Sandow dress as? I forget. Um, he dr- he dressed as a boomer sooner. Yep. In oh, other yeah, words, nothing. He wore a college shirt. That was it. <laughs> that was it. That the only way it. the only way that gimmick would have been effective is if he dressed as Jr. and just kept screaming, nine 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 nine. Jeez. All right, guys. Uh, well, you know what? Hey, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with Remember When. Of course, we got the great store over at SogatronMedia.com slash store. We got digital downloads, DVDs, all kinds of fun stuff, including Vicious Outcast Wrestling, the International Wrestling Cartel. And of course, uh, uh, guys are having a pretty big show coming up this week, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, that you can check out at RWALive.com. They actually got two shows going on, one including a great main event, including Matt Hardy, of all people. So that's going to be a fun show to work. I hope he's never listened to the show. So hi, Matt Hardy. Uh, we'll see you in West <laughs> Newton. Um, anyways, uh, but you can check out. Here's a, if you're on the video, you can get a little trailer for the last RWA show and check that out and all that stuff. And you can uh, uh, drop in eight bucks for uh, uh, an RWA show. See if you dig it. And, uh, and, and definitely check out this show if you're in the area, in the Pittsburgh area, or uh, later on when it comes to digital download here in the, uh, probably next week. By the time you're hearing this, it's going to be up and available. Uh, so uh, stay tuned to that. Check out and stuff. And sign up for the newsletter on Wrestling... I think we got it on Wrestling Mayhem Show and uh, .com and SorgatronMedia.com and you'll get updates for all the podcasts and uh, any specials or new releases that we have going on. We got a lot of cool stuff going on in conjunction with Joe Dombrowski, uh, a lot of best ofs and stuff that look like they're coming down the pipe. Uh, and who knows what documentary he's going to send me to film next. <laughs> I heard I might need a passport for the next. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, so we'll be right back with Remember One. And we're back. It's time for Remember When. Oh, remember this. You'll never remember this because you are drunk as hell. Because that's how you listen to the show. We know you're at work and your boss also knows that you're drunk and you're going to get fired. If HR calls you, tell them that HR, I mean, Wrestling Mayhem Show sent you because you were remembering when. Uh, oh, that? This week on Fuck Remember your face. That's what that was. Wow. Uh, this week on Remember When, uh, we. Hot. I'm on cat pills. I, it was suggested we talk about. Because, uh, of course, we had our uh, uh, Brock Lesnar and John Cena grace us this week on Raw via video package. Which means we're going to see that video package multiple times this week if you watch a lot of WWE <laughs> programming. Yay! Um, yeah. but it did bring up the idea that I believe Mike floated. Uh, what was your v- favorite video package going into a show like this? You know, um, so who wants to go first? Well, I hand our guest. Okay. 
every year, Sorg. <laughs> I'm, I'm very fortunate. Shit. Every year, my favorite uh, pay-per-view happens. And attached to my favorite pay-per-view is my favorite video package ever of all the times. And it details the numbers, <laughs> the rundown of the numbers for, you guessed it, the Royal fucking Rumble. There are minute changes each and every year. People stay in for less time and more eliminations and this, that, and the other. And it is fan-fucking-tastic. Uh, I love it. And I don't know what year they started it, but I'm going to... I'm going to make a special YouTube playlist that's just the fucking Royal Rumble rundowns. Nice. This year this year's going to be the first year we don't see Kane in the 2001 Rumble going off cuz Roman Reigns beat him last year. Mm-hmm. Roman Reigns did beat him yes last. Yep. <laughs> Riz! Nine nine nine. Nine nine nine. Riz. Nice box. Riz, what's your favorite? Oh, what's going on? Riz, what's your um, thing? I got a fucking video package. You shit, Rick. I do have. Call me Rick. <laughs> yeah, I called you Rick. <laughs> Rick Moranis. Oh, oh man. Um, <laughs> mine goes along the same routes as Lunchbox. Um, Money in the Bank actually did the Know Your WWE stats for Money in the Bank, which was pretty much by the numbers Money in the Bank. Uh, and it is even – it is one of the better things they've done unless you're talking about, you know, the by the numbers for the Royal Rumble. Uh, they even went by the largest superstar in the, Royal, in the uh, Money in the Bank match – to you know, Hornswoggle being in the Money in the Bank match, mm-hmm. um, and it's pretty much just the Royal Rumble. Uh, no, no, you're it's Royal Rumble by the numbers, but only with Money in the Bank, which is perfectly done this year only. This year, so it's it, it's back to where they have now that many Money in the Banks so that they can actually do something this awesome. Nice. Nice. Uh, what about you, Mad Mike? Uh, well, me, my my favorite one, the first one that came to my head, um, was not the one Tony Garza posted in the chat, which I will not say in case it's someone else's. Um, but leading up to SummerSlam 2002, the return of my favorite wrestler of all time, Shawn Michaels. That video mm. package mm. where it starts off with them as DX and JR saying Shawn Michaels and Triple H are closer than most brothers, and then Triple H just bloodies the shit out of them, and and I believe they use the I will fight till there's nothing left. Like that whole the whole thing and Shawn Michaels kips up out of the wheelchair saying he's gonna fight, he's gonna come back, and oh it was so good. Nice, I nice. remember around that time there was a they did like a retrospective video on like Shawn Michaels' career, and that was awesome too. It was kind of like the reintroduction to Shawn Michaels, which is nice, perfectly done. Nice, Carlin's, Carlin's. So we got both of you on there. Can't see in that shot there. Uh, so is... do you uh, do you have a shared video package? Do you have one? Everybody, I knows. didn't think so. Okay. Um, Jen's is about Dean Ambrose's package. Anything recorded with a camcorder held in front of you, like looking back like this. Oh, like Jen's. This is a good Im- imitation, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my my favorite is the. Uh, it was either late 2001 or early 2002, and Ric Flair had shown up, and he and uh, Vince McMahon were in the midst of their uh, battle for control of the uh, WWF. And Ric Flair decided that he would try to sway Vince back to the good side by creating the greatest video package of all time. And he said Aww. this on the air, and he said, Vince, I'm going to turn you good. I went to Stanford, Connecticut, and I made your poor little video guys work 36 hours straight creating the greatest video package of all time. And it was the history of WWF set to Kid Rock's Lonely Road of Fame. And, hey, look, I'm not the biggest Kid Rock guy, but when you sync it up with enough wrestling footage – Pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, and it was exactly Matt, it was the history of the WWF set the music. It was awesome. Matt, do you remember the follow-up to that one? Where after um, 
Vince announced that he was going to bring the NWO in, they did that same package, but with the NWO black and white music breaking it up and then showing NWO highlights for the second half of the song. <laughs> I'm going to have to go find that one. because Oh, my God. Anymore. It was so this good. Because is this the... I'm looking Vince at was running SmackDown and I wasn't watching SmackDown. So is this the uh, WWF Desire video? It's the it's the history of the WWE. Okay. I, I remember because when I was in college, I downloaded that video and I still have it on my mm. desktop. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I must have watched it like a, a million times. It was amazing. Oh yeah. Awesome. awesome. I, I believe I believe Ric Flair said it costs a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. <laughs> I think he said it cost nine ninety nine. Nine ninety nine. Oh, nice. Oh, no. Solid. We're What's doing their job nine? for them. This is I'll sad. This is so sad. Mike, did you? Did I get you? Yeah, I got you. I went. Yeah. Yeah. Wheels. Yeah. I can't keep track. Come on, man. Wheels. How many people are in the hangout? Wheels is with Hi us. There. Speaking Wheels. of RWA at the break. Yep. Wheels. <laughs> yes. Yes. Tell us. <laughs> What's your <laughs> thing, <laughs> Wheels? What's your favorite? Tell us, goddammit. I will tell you when I'm ready. Now I'm ready. All right. My favorite package of all time was. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I said it that way. <laughs> wow. It's Dean Ambrose. Come on. We're all mature. <laughs> My favorite video package of all time was uh, the Shawn Michaels and. Undertaker to WrestleMania. That was oh, one of my favorite yeah. shows. Oh, yeah. Seeing so them really both. Good. That was super it good. It was just like amazing. I loved it so much. I, every once in a while, I just got to watch it again because it's just like the good and the bad. And you don't know which is which. So that was my favorite video package. Not <laughs> Dean <and> Ambrose. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Oh, my. Hey, Amy is Amen. with us, oh, co-host no, 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 no. of the yeah, Indie you. Mayhem Show. What's uh, yours? Uh, it was the one that Wheels said. Skip me. I got to think of another one because I'm not getting like, – that's the only one I could think of was the Taker Shawn Michaels one from the retirement because it put the whole storyline into full perspective of Shawn wanting to get a Taker again and the whole mm-hmm. like him trying to win the Rumble thing. and, and well, like, Wait, no, you're describing the one uh, for Sean's retirement match. Wheels was describing the first one. Oh, you're talking about a different one? Okay, then I'll take that one. That's fine. Um, the, retirement, <laughs> the retirement one. The, the one where basically the story going into it was that Taker wouldn't fight Sean. Um, so Sean was like, I'm going to win the Rumble Son because he was the champion at the time. I think and then just took mine. Are you talking about the one to placebos went running up the hill? That is it. That is the Son one. of a yeah. bitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good package, and I can't think of a lot of other ones. Right. There's, a, there's a good one in the chat room. There's a really, really, really good, good one in the chat room. Well, maybe let's let Sword go first. Well, oh, well yeah, now. Um, wow, I don't know do what edge thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do the edge thing. But, no, I remember the placebo one's way better than this. Um, I've always been partial to, uh, it looks like it's, uh, the note, note on here is uh, says when Edge became world champ. Um, so it must be one of the times. Uh, but it's obviously SmackDown. He's taking on Batista, and the music is to uh, Ozzy Osbourne's Never Gonna Stop. Uh, oh, it was a it was a fun promo. I got into it leading up to the pay per view, whatever that pay per view was. Um, <laughs> and it, it really, I don't know, it's one of those things that really stuck out in a time where super super memorable. <laughs> oh yeah, whatever the pay per view awesome was. Oh, but but I remember the song, and I remember leading into whatever that pay per view was. I was kind of really <laughs> excited for it, and it was like a time when like SmackDown Raw was kind of eh, you know, we we had the brand split, and we're kind of like eh, eh. And, and and it was it was one of those things that just kind of <laughs> what uh, the noises you were making yeah. 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 It was just we kind of like yeah. you know coming what? oh it's going into trying, judgment day trying that. real hard to come it's going into judgment day <laughs> judgment day that year yeah, it's Whatever not working yeah. <laughs> I don't know that's what I had did we miss anybody here yeah I didn't go yet Bobby, Bobby you're here I'm, I'm thinking of two uh, should I go older or newer I don't know. Go Say it both. Older. Wait. Okay. Uh, the first one I was thinking of was the uh, newer one, 
That'd be Dan O'Brien versus Triple H, the the um, monster promo. That is that package. Really yeah. that, that one's like one of my all time favorite ones they've ever done. Uh, the other one I was thinking of was John Cena versus CM Punk, where they interspliced the pipe bomb pro- pipe bomb promo. And they oh yeah, like that's a good one too. Quick, quick made like quick cuts and static and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool, and it was it was a it was a good feud and stuff like that. So those are the two I was thinking of. Uh, from from Tony Garza in the chat room, he uh, put forward the video package from Rock vs. Austin at WrestleMania Seven with uh, nice. Limp Bizkit, with Limp Bizkit's My Way, which is yes. also really, really that good. one was good. That one's good. Also, mm-hmm. was... um, the Miz nah, the Miz oh, package. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah. was a good one too. That was that was gonna be my second one in case someone that was the uh, yeah. the could... WrestleMania that he barely main evented. Yes, exactly. But hey, he, he made a splash. Out. He made a splash, <laughs> and those awesome, the awesome letters have survived. He yeah. made a splash by his head hitting the concrete and him getting concussed. And now he's got sunglasses. Yeah, just like Brock Lesnar. So I was, I was holding off on this one because I didn't want to take it if it was somebody else's. But uh, honorable mention to – you ready for this? You ready for this? Rebel. <laughs> Remember? Eh? No, CM Punk? No, no. CM Punk when he first yeah. came to oh, ECW. Yeah. Those yeah. Some weird promos. Oh, oh you know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Speaking of CM Punk, when he first came, when he just came into WWE, mm-hmm. he kicked his only addiction. His only addiction was competition, and now he's kicked the habit. Good for you, CM Punk. <laughs> he's off the wagon. Or he's on the wagon. One of those. He's AJ's on the wagon. wagon. AJ's yes. the wagon. Ah. <laughs> uh, wow. Um, wow. Rebel. On that note, guys, I think everybody's <laughs> gone. Let us know <laughs> at Mayhem Show on Twitter or on Fa- Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook or Google Plus or in the Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, is Are there any promos that you dug? Uh, randomly, we have the Insane Clown Posse's greatest show in there that I'm sharing with uh, the Mad Mike, so you can check that out too, so you can see how how that went. Um, but yeah, well, I know they had they had their own version of of the Oddities theme that they did for a uh, a off CD that they did. Um, anyways, with that, hey guys, I want to give a shout out. You know, we are big fans of T-shirts, as I learned last we week. As we love have, t-shirts as i learned last week from panel riot of all places t-shirts. uh bobby of g-town loves his t-shirts bobby loves t-shirts i love t-shirts too much but oh, really? it oh, lets so me dumb. say who i am yes what yeah. sure it lets me advertise who i am and you can't too he just oh. wears a giant shirt all day that's in Bobby. Bobby you, can, you too can go over to Pro I, Wrestling. I'm with Bobby. You're stamping on my promo. You too yeah. can, stand, can can go over to ProWrestlingTees.com <laughs> slash WMS. Check out the sweet tees with some designs by the great Alex Cars at AlexCarsDesigns.com. It supports the show. Sweet tea? Sweet tees. Some I sweet could tees. support sweet, sweet tea. Right sweet you got the property of Mayhem. You got Good Times at Wrestling Mayhem Show. You got the great logo. Uh, eight years strong, and of course, uh, you can go check out other stuff. Andre the Giant, Mick Foley's on here, the Randy Savage, Big Van Vader, Hacksaw, Jim Duggan, and support plenty of indie guys like Chris Hero, ACH, friends of the show like DJ Zima, uh, Chris Saban, China. What? Wait a minute. Uh, Christopher yep. Daniels, Ethan Page, guys we've seen around the area and abroad. Uh, it's a great collection of stuff. Support them. Can I? Can I? Can I jump in here, Sword? Sure. Ethan you're- Page had. Ethan Page has some amazing, amazing shirts to buy. Okay. Just pointing that out there. Keep Continue, Sorg. Also, uh, Brodus Clay is on this, if you're wondering what's going on with him and what to no. wear him on your back. Uh, Make a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. For Planet Funk. For Planet Funk. So for, go check all that out. At Pro, but start at ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS and support the show and wrestling in general. Do it, man. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it, uh, Do it right now. Do it. So, real Speaking quick, anything that. anything you want to touch on here uh, before we get out of here for <laughs> oh, this week? Oh, there is something I'm excited about with TNA. Um, Jessica Havoc appears to be coming to Impact. Yes, yes. she does. Jessica, Jessica Rabbit? With a coming no, soon Bobby, promo. Bobby. 
<laughs> yeah. So. They they actually uh, had a pretty cool promo that was kind of like uh, Matrixy type letters. Please, but, but no. Speaking no. of video packages, not not Jessica <laughs> Rabbit, not Jessica. No one's playing Patty Cake in TNA, but uh, oh. Jessica Havoc is gonna be coming to TNA, and that should be really ball, really well, interesting. Since we have him here, uh, why don't we have our indie expert tell us why is Jessica Havoc such a big damn deal? Because she's badass and she doesn't take shit from anybody. And it is conflicting because I'm excited for her. But in turn, I am setting myself up to be super disappointed by this. <laughs> TNA loves to do that. Um, yeah, but no. I mean, if people are going on a higher stage, it's always good. And, and I'm excited. So uh, TNA did actually well this week. You can go listen to the TNA Impact after show this uh, week here, that, here. that we were on because we said nice things. We said Should, nice things. And you know, we, if you want our, our opinions, we do have the Impact after show, like Eamon talked about that I host. Um, but <laughs> no, okay, okay. That, that Sorry, Eamon, that Eamon used to host, and then he went all big time on. What is this happening? Okay. Um, um, excuse me. Co-host. Hi. Co-host. Hi. Hi. I, I, I do that show, too. Hi, Mike. <laughs> uh, we but, all, okay, so we all contribute to things. Your here's, here's, here's what I want to ask you guys. Do you want to see Dixie Carter go through a table? Oh, oh yeah, we should talk hey, about spoilers. this. Spoilers. We should talk about this. No, 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 but we, oh. we should talk about this because it's really kind of fucked up the ad campaign. The timing of this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. TNA's like, hey, beat up your boss, guys. It's fun. Oh, yeah. that's also something I hate, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like, if, if there's somebody out there who puts their boss through a table, <laughs> first of all, that person's not going to have a job anymore. Yeah, exactly. And like, second I, of all, I, I'm really, I guys, sort of put guys, yourself through a table right guys, now. Guys, I'm, well, I'm really worried because I'm my own boss, and, and I'm actually going to be at a wrestling show on Thursday night. Uh, and I'm do really, it. Oh, my. Do it. I'm really, yeah, Swap. but. but, but Swap on that shit. But, I'm, it's okay, Sorg. You can't fire I'm, yourself. I'm somebody, some but I'm somebody's tape. boss on on Thursday night. And and I'm so, I'm worried. Sorg, put your boss through the table. Because, because he tape. did have Chachi get punched in the nuts by Jock Sampson on his birthday. Hashtag uh, Sorg through a table. Hashtag 999. Go through. Hashtag it happened. <laughs> Prayers for Sorg. Prayers for Sorg. Uh, Prayers for Sorg. Oh, Sorg. Sorg. Hashtag Every... Sorg's getting wood. Everything <laughs> going on, not <laughs> oh, Sorg, don't worry. I would if that happened to you. Yeah, Wheels, you're going to stop them. Wheels, you've been yeah. used as a foreign object in a match. You've been Wheels? thrown at the necro Sorg, Sorg, Wheels carries a gun in his wheelchair at all times. That's why they call him Hot Wheels. Because he's fucking <laughs> he's always packing, packing heat. I thought it's because he was always cool, stealing cool. stuff. No, wow. I didn't. Uh, that's riding cool. dirty. What is going on? Wheels is riding dirty. <laughs> no, that would be if he had pot in his wheelchair. And, oh. And medical marijuana is not legal yet. Not here. Not in Pennsylvania. But he lives in California. No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, no, no. That's good. Oh, I got it. I got it. Boy, I got, got you. It. Bobby points. <laughs> wow. But wow. Like, like we were saying, both timing and the fact that they're promoting this, even the boss is the promoting this moment, is kind of stupid. Yeah, yeah. And, and the fact that they basically showed the clip as their preview for next week on last week's Impact. Hashtag it happens. Hashtag we're desperate. That's so shocking. Hashtag please watch us. It's like, so it's before like we go to 999. Like, it's like no, if no, you were no, releasing no. a trailer for Star Wars, and in the trailer for Star Wars, you have Vader say, Luke, I'm your father. What? What? I know. Oh, right. you know that for me? Well, I've never seen Jesus Star Wars. <laughs> Fucking hell. Now people. you'll be telling me Before the that. end of the Goonies when that little Korean kid dies. <laughs> <laughs> 
that what happens? I thought in the I thought in the oh Goonies. Oh I thought in the Goonies. Oh Is that what happens? You didn't miss oh, it. No, no. Goonies <sighs> never say die, Lunchbox. They they just don't die. I thought that's why it was ironic because that little Korean <laughs> kid dies. <laughs> Because they meet that big troll monster who thinks he's a little candy bar and they, <laughs> and he eats him. Oh. Is that is that not thing? Is that that should? LB, can around. you rewrite the Goonies for me, please? Oh. Yeah. Guys, I I just did. guys, let me please. Oh god, we can't get any further than that. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Please, please, please. <laughs> oh, how about how about you, Riz? I learned. I learned that every time a tree dies, another one grows its place. What? All what? you have to do is believe. Believe. Get it. Right. Get All it. Right. Believe. All right. All right. A streak will live. What about the Carlins? <laughs> do you have anything joint or separate? That you've learned you from learn wrestling? Anything? We all know what I learned. All right. Go ahead. I, I, learned I don't know what things. she learned. I don't know what she learned either. Uh, let let me go first. What you did, what, Jen, what did you learn from your fan fiction this week? That's <gasps> what I want to know. Mike! <laughs> That's gold. We don't share that for free. All right. I learned two things, Sword. What? I learned Leilani Kai is still so getting after it yeah. on the independence. Getting after it. Leilani Kai. <laughs> I might have inside information on that. Oh, Leilani Leilani Kai. Grandma Leilani. Getting after it. Granny Leilani. Hashtag. Right. And, uh, Hashtag. I also learned that um, uh, nothing goes over Dave Bautista's head. Yes. Because his reflexes <laughs> are too <good. laughs> He'd this catch is... it. He'd catch it. That was my catch favorite it. knife. There you go. Damn it, you kind of stole mine, though, Carlos. But that's Wheels? <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. He wasn't ready. Wheels. What did yeah. I learn? I Wheels, now. I'm right here. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> I have learned sound equipment can fail even if you're not running it. Whoa. Ah. Whoa. Wow. Oh, inside joke. Inside baseball. <laughs> <laughs> shoot. Shoot. I don't know what's happening. Eamon, what about you? Oh, I learned from wrestling. Uh, I, Damon, you're still here. I am still here. Uh, I Wait, what show wrestling. are we doing? I don't fucking know. I'm finished. Wait, I learned from wrestling. I don't even fucking know. Uh, I learned from wrestling this week that uh, WWE's got to calm it down. I was super <laughs> bored. Nine, nine, nine. No, no, I'm not even talking about that. I was super bored with last night's Raw, what? and I I realized like it was three hours long as it, as it normally is. <laughs> and I'm like, there's ten matches on that show. Like, none of them are memorable. I can't remember a single Shut goddamn your match damn on the show. Mouth. Get out! Like, we'll get him. Really, Eamon? And Heath I, Slater pinned Seth Rollins. Heath Slater, Slater won the main event of Raw. That was Slater super- Gator. Slater tell me Gator. Other, tell me about the other nine matches that were on that show. He doesn't matter. <laughs> well, main event match. The Ambrose the versus match. Del Rio. Dean Ambrose yeah. versus the Money in the Brink. Be- Dean Ambrose Be- is saving that company right now. Oh, Bo <laughs> Dallas versus uh, for you. Bo Dallas our truth. Sinkara <laughs> versus Rusev. Also, match number two hundred fifty in the no, best actually, 500 series between Gold Dust and, and Ryback. Right the the Sinkara uh, Rusev match was technically not on TV. True. It was shown in clips. On the WWE app, I, I think I think it was shown its, its entirety. It's entirety yeah. <laughs> my my thing is this: there's the WWE is producing so much wrestling right now, and I think it's what's suffering from the product. Mm-hmm. Imagine, okay, so like Inspire Pro Wrestling, we produce like ten match, three hour long shows. So basically, that episode of Raw. Imagine if we had to produce indie wrestling shows every week, plus on top of other things. They need to scale it back. They need to. They need to, because nobody feels. Because Cesaro's dropping out two minute matches now, and like, it, there's so much happening, and they need to just just pull it back a bit, and 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 maybe like spread some shit out a bit, and then you know get back on track. Because I want to enjoy wrestling. And, and, yeah, that's wrestling's right. fun. Wrestling, wrestling is fun. fun. It is fun. That's, that's a, a different promotion. promotion. 
What about you, Bobby? <laughs> Jinx. Bobby? Leave me alone. I I learned I learned that if they wanted to last night, they could have had the out for the um the Adam Rose gimmick. They could have like when he appeared in the 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 Oculus mirror, he could have turned into Leo Kruger. And they could have had like a dual personality with him, which would kind of been kind of cool. So that's what I learned they could have done, but they didn't. So yeah. Right. What about you, Mad Mike? I I I learned that I've never been so fucking excited for a flag match before in my life. America <laughs> so am for this flag match at SummerSlam. I can't fucking wait. I'm American in my pants, by the way. America. <laughs> nice. I rush oh, 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 the longest, oh, the longest oh, flag Bobby match build since oh, Bobby. The longest bla- flag <laughs> match build <laughs> since uh, Madison Square Garden. I'm telling you. I'm yes. telling you. What, speaking, what's speaking what's up, Bobby? Of, uh, erupting in your pants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different show. Come in. Oh, oh, no, how about Lana looking like Pee Wee Herman and still being attractive last night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. She can get it. Wow. Um. Jeez. Uh. LB. What's up, bro? This is the part where we end the show by you tell us what we learned. Uh, I did learn a thing. Oh, I was reminded of something. Uh, so I relearned it. Randy Orton looks motherfucking good in a suit. Okay. Oh, that's one thing we should have talked about. Randy Orton, Randy you, say, you, 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 you like to say Lana can get it? Randy Orton can get it. God damn. Randy, Randy Orton also hates fat chicks. Oh. <laughs> ah, yeah, he does. Yeah. Well, Randy, Randy Orton is not a star. Check his Twitter. Oh, no. oh, no. oh no. yeah, I did see that. What, what's up, Randy Orton? What's what up, doing? Randy Orton? And I learned uh, this week, guys. He's a scumbag, but... Sorg, what'd you learn? I learned that I narrowly avoided a Virgil encounter Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that was good. That, that was, was good. Easy. Anyway. All <laughs> right. Uh, with that, guys, hey, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Holy crap. Everybody is here. Um, everybody say you're welcome to Sorg. You're welcome to Sorg. I love you. Wow. That's Friday night. Nice. Thanks, Dad. It's a bottom heavy show. Anyways, check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, yeah. uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, video and audio formats. Follow, subscribe, share with your friends. You can also drop us a line, too. This is going to be good. Who's talking? Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com, 412 206 WMS0. You can also drop us a line. We're on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Facebook, uh, Google Plus, and the Facebook group, group at Wrestling Mayhem Show. Goop. You can join us live at live.sorgatronmedia.com around 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, and stick around for uh, 11 p.m. for our Indie Mayhem Show interviews we do every week. And a uh, big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR on the Twitters for helping out with show notes and tweets all night long. So for the entire crew, they're all here. See you next week. Mayhem out. Just wait, just wait, just wait.